Thank you, and thank you all for tuning in. Uh, my name is Tom Acod. I'm a hand and upper extremity surgeon with the Core Institute, and tonight I'd like to talk to you about the diagnosis and treatment of carpal tunnel syndrome. What is carpal tunnel syndrome? It's a condition caused by compression of the median nerve at the wrist. It's very common. It can affect up to 9% of the general population. It is more common in women, and it is more common in, in patients greater than 40 years of age. It can affect one wrist, or it can go on to affect both wrists. Where does it get its name from? Well, it is a problem within a tunnel or space within the wrist called the carpal tunnel. It's a normal part of our wrists, and everyone is born with this space. Inside this tunnel, there are nine tendons and one nerve called the median nerve that travel out to the fingers. The tunnel itself is shaped like a rectangular box. The natural arch of the wrist bones make up three sides of the box, as pictured there with the black line. And one side of the box is made up of a ligament called the transverse carpal ligament, pictured there in the blue. And that's going to be important later when we talk about surgery and other treatment options. The size of the tunnel cannot change because the rigid bones that make up three sides of that box cannot expand. And so anything that causes increased pressure within the tunnel will cause the nerve to not function normally, when, and this is responsible for the symptoms that patients experience. There are many causes and risk factors. Uh, however, most commonly the cause is unknown or what we call idiopathic. The thinking is that genetics and the way that our wrists are made predispose us to this condition and certain patients are born to get it, if you will, and that exposure to certain risk factors as we go through life uh, cause the condition to come on. And again, anything that causes increased swelling or inflammation within the carpal tunnel will put pressure on the nerve. Some of these risk factors include female gender, increasing age, pregnancy, certain wrist injuries or wrist fractures, wrist arthritis, repetitive hand or wrist motion, such as repetitive gripping, wrist bending or extending, and exposure to vibrations such as certain power tools. Certain medical conditions also put us at risk, including diabetes, hypothyroidism, rheumatoid arthritis, gout, amyloidosis, and obesity. There are other very rare causes, such as cysts or tumors within the carpal tunnel that can also cause the condition. So what about typing? Uh, there has not been shown to be a, a direct link between carpal tunnel syndrome and computer work and typing. Uh, it's difficult to determine if typing and uh, desk work are the main cause of symptoms or if uh, these activities uh, aggravated a condition that uh, patients were predisposed to or uh, had at uh, low levels. So what do people uh, feel who have carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, there are a number of symptoms. Uh, some patients experience volar wrist or palm or wrist pain, uh, numbness or tingling in the thumb, index, middle, or ring fingers, uh, sense of burning in the same area, uh, weakness, uh, dropping objects or clumsiness of the fingers, uh, waking up at nighttime with the hand asleep. Uh, sometimes uh, patients will report having to hang it off the side of the bed to, and shake the hand to get blood flow back, uh, a, a feeling of fingers being swollen, uh, or a sensation of hot or cold in the fingers. And the presentation can be variable. Some patients will have some of these symptoms. Uh, some patients will have all of these symptoms. And the symptoms may worsen with certain activities. For example, uh, it's common for these to worsen during driving or uh, reading a newspaper or a book. It's important to remember that not all hand numbness is caused by carpal tunnel syndrome. There are other conditions that can cause similar symptoms. Some other uh, similar and related symptoms include other, other peripheral nerve compression, such as compression of the ulnar nerve at the elbow, or what is known as cubital tunnel syndrome. Thoracic outlet syndrome, which is, which is a pinched nerve uh, between the neck and the arm. Cervical radiculopathy, which is a pinched nerve in the neck that can cause neck symptoms or neck pain and sensations of electrical uh, shooting pains down the arm. Peripheral neuropathy, which is a condition with nerves themselves that are not uh, compressed or pinched. Tendinitis, fibromyalgia, and arthritis. And one distinction is that pain without numbness or tingling is usually not carpal tunnel syndrome. Usually carpal tunnel syndrome causes some sort of nerve symptom, whether it's numbness, burning, or weakness. 
there is a phenomenon called a double crush. And this, what happens in this condition is the nerves can be compressed in multiple areas. For example, uh, one can have a pinched nerve as it exits the neck or exits the spine, and then that nerve can be compressed also at the wrist. And this is important in treatment because if you treat, for example, carpal tunnel syndrome or the pinched nerve at the wrist, uh, it will not alleviate all the symptoms we have because we can still have a uh, compression in another location. So what do I look for when I examine a patient that I think may have carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, I like to look at the sensation of each of the fingers. I look for weakness, specifically of the thumb muscles. That median nerve that's, that uh, is affected with carpal tunnel syndrome does power those thumb muscles. And so I look for, for weakness or signs of nerve dysfunction. Look for atrophy or uh, loss of thumb muscle or when the thumb muscle appears to have shrunken, as pictured there on the right. You can see that the thumb muscle uh, has been lost on both sides. And then there are certain special tests that I look for, such as compression testing or provocative testing, to look for nerve irritability or a nerve dysfunction at the carpal tunnel, and also to look for other causes of nerve uh, entrapment that uh, may be causing the symptoms that we have. Carpal tunnel is a clinical diagnosis, which means that uh, no further testing is necessary to diagnose the condition or to proceed with treatment. Uh, one test that's commonly performed is an EMG or a nerve test. This test can confirm the diagnosis, is this carpal tunnel syndrome. It can also provide information on the severity of the condition. Uh, for example, is it mild, moderate, or severe disease? And it can also provide information on uh, how healthy the nerve is. And I think this is important uh, information to have because it provides some information on what to expect after treatment, specifically surgery. The nerve test can also identify other causes of numbness, such as peripheral neuropathy. Ultrasound is a newer uh, promising test uh, that can help diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, it, however, does not provide any information on severity or the presence of other conditions. And x-rays and MRI are usually not that helpful and, and not routinely obtained. Treatments for this condition really, uh, they break down into two, uh, two camps. One is non-surgical treatment and one is surgical treatment and we'll go through both of these. Non-surgical treatment consists of uh, wrist braces, medications, steroid injections or cortisone shots, activity modification and nerve glides, and surgery is really comprised of a procedure called carpal tunnel release. Wrist braces are commonly worn at nighttime and are commonly a first-line treatment. They work by keeping the wrist straight while we sleep. This helps keep that pressure low inside the carpal tunnel and helps prevent that nerve from becoming irritated. It can help us sleep through the night. It can also help with some of the daytime numbness as well. Oral steroids can be effective in helping symptoms. Uh, studies suggest that there may be limited benefit to anti-inflammatories or NSAIDs. Steroid injection is a relatively safe and also common treatment. If you look at studies on this treatment, uh, they suggest that the treatment may be, or the, I'm sorry, the relief may be short-lived. Uh, and a lot of studies suggest that symptoms may come back within 12 months. I do think steroid injections are uh, useful if the diagnosis is unsure. For example, if I'm seeing a patient that has numbness and we're not quite sure if it's carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, a lot of times I'll try a steroid injection to see what sort of relief we get. Uh, as a test run for possible surgery. When is surgery a good idea? I think there's really uh, two big causes in my practice. The first is failure of non-surgical treatment. So for example, if we try bracing and maybe a steroid shot and symptoms are still not controlled, uh, then I think surgery is, is, a, is the next step. Also, when I'm seeing a patient uh, that's showing signs of advanced nerve compression, for example, uh, the picture here, uh, this patient has uh, atrophy or loss of the thumb muscle. And I worry that if we, uh, the longer this goes on, the, um, it tends to be progressive and it can lead to further uh, nerve dysfunction and um, more permanent weakness. And so I, in those patients, I do tend to uh, move to surgery uh, at a quicker pace. There have been some studies comparing treatments at six and 12 months, and surgery has been shown to have a greater treatment benefit compared to splinting, anti-inflammatories, therapy, and a single steroid injection. 
surgery is an outpatient, surger, uh, outpatient procedure. It tends to be fairly quick. Uh, during the surgery, that transverse carpal ligament or that one side of the box is cut or incised. Uh, and this doing so helps relieve the pressure within the, the carpal tunnel and relieve pressure on that median nerve. This can help stop the disease from progressing. Uh, taking pressure off the nerve also allows the nerve to start to heal itself. Uh, it's important to note though that during the surgery there's no nerve healing or nerve repair. Uh, all we do is take pressure off the nerve. And this is important because if, if the carpal tunnel is fairly advanced, uh, this can, um, folks can have permanent uh, nerve damage that may already be present at the time of surgery and this may not fully resolve. There are two different types of surgery or carpal tunnel release. Uh, the first picture there on the left is what's called an open carpal tunnel release. This is uh, done by making a several centimeter incision at the base of the palm. That ligament that we talked about is incised uh, to release the pressure on the nerve. Uh, this can be done uh, under local anesthesia by injecting some numbing medicine in the area uh, so that uh, we do not feel any pain. Uh, and it can be done without the need for any IVs or any anesthetic. The procedure on the right, uh, the endoscopic carpal tunnel release, uh, generally requires general anesthesia. This requires a smaller incision at the end of the form and a camera or a scope is put into the carpal tunnel and the ligament is released from the inside. So which one's better? Uh, there's been no difference uh, or superior technique over one another. Multiple studies uh, have shown that long-term outcomes and the risks of surgery are comparable between the two procedures. Uh, some would argue that endoscopic may provide uh, benefit of slightly earlier return to work and grip strength. Um, however, it may also have a slightly increased risk of needing revision surgery or transient nerve injury. After surgery, some stitches are placed. Generally, a light dressing like this is placed. The fingers are kept free and can be used right away. I generally place uh, patients on a weightlifting restriction for roughly four weeks after surgery. What can we expect after surgery? The incision is generally healed uh, enough for sutures to re be removed at two weeks. Uh, initially, the wound will be inflamed and red uh, in appearance, and generally this uh, becomes more rosy or pink and eventually fades into a fainter scar as pictured there on the right. Numbness and tingling and weakness uh, tend to start to improve, but can take a long time to go away. Uh, the numbness can take up to 9 to 12 months to know our final result, uh, and sometimes this does fully resolve and go away, uh, but again, in, in more severe cases, sometimes this may partially improve, but may never go away completely. However, waking up at nighttime and nerve pain, those tend to improve uh, fairly quickly uh, within a few days after surgery. It's fairly common to have some deep achiness or soreness at the base of the palm. Uh, this is usually experienced with gripping and, and more strenuous activity. This can last for around three months, but does tend to go away. The procedure is relatively safe. There are some risks of surgery, including things like infections or wound healing problems. Uh, there is a chance of the carpal tunnel coming back um, in the future after surgery. Overall, this is a uh, procedure that has high patient satisfaction, uh, particularly if the diagnosis is correct. Um, these are some pictures of patients who underwent the open carpal tunnel release. Uh, the young lady there pictured on the left is six weeks after surgery. You can see that her scar is healing nicely, but still has a little bit of a rosy appearance. The gentleman on the right had uh, both sides uh, perform had both sides done uh, through the open carpal tunnel technique. On the right side, you can see his scar is still somewhat inflamed and rosy in appearance. And on his left side, he's about three months from surgery, you can see that the scar on that side is more mature. Well, thank you for tuning in this evening, and I'd like to welcome any questions. You can. I think the majority of patients choose to have one done uh, at a time and then have the other follow shortly thereafter. Uh, I th the one the, the bit of advice I give is, is to uh, think about our aftercare. Uh, most folks can go back to using their fingers and hand pretty quickly, but, but some may have increased pain for the first few weeks. And so I think as long as we have some help at home, uh, in case we uh, are in that second group that has a little bit more discomfort, um, some help to, with things like food preparation, opening doors, things like that. Um, so I think occasionally I'll do it, but, but most of the time, 
Uh, we'll do one side, then sometimes we'll schedule a second um, as soon as two weeks later. Uh, and sometimes we'll do one side, kind of get over that, make sure we're happy with the results so far, and then schedule the second one later. So I think it depends on, on what we do for work. I think fingers can be used right away. Uh, so desk work can be done you know, whenever pain allows. That can be within several days. Uh, stitches come out at two weeks. And so uh, generally, uh, you know, things in food preparation, things like that, um, uh, if we're feeling okay, that time is okay. I think if we're in more uh, uh, manual labor or, or a job where we do more lifting, then I think more like four to six weeks. Uh, it's pretty common for that area to be sore for up to three months, however. Uh, a lot of times things like golf, it's really when pain allows. I think most of the time by four to six weeks. It can. Uh, it's not always progressive. I think in er especially more mild disease uh, and carpal tunnel that has not been there for as long, I certainly would try some non-surgical treatment. Uh, it, can, it can certainly go away, uh, especially if, that, if those conditions that can cause inflammation there in the wrist, if, if those uh, calm down, if you will. I think if in cases where the carpal tunnel is more severe, then I do worry that that tends to be more progressive uh, and is unlikely to go away on its own. However, it can be slowly progressive, so it, it, can, it may not be getting better, but a lot, a lot of times we can become used to the symptoms um, and it can slowly get worse in the background. Uh, this, uh, th they can sometimes be difficult to tell. I, I, I think um, uh, history and listening to some of the symptoms can certainly um, uh, kind of lead us in the right direction. Uh, certainly carpal tunnel tends to be more uh, numbness in the fingers sometimes numbness in the wrist or the hand or the form but uh, for example uh, it should it generally does not cause numbness that shoots up to the shoulder or to the neck so uh, if we have those symptoms I start to think about other causes such as um, pinched nerves in the neck and I think physical exam plays a large role I think uh, in carpal tunnel syndrome I tend to see the nerve be irritated at the wrist and generally um, I can sense that with an exam. Uh, and then in, in certainly in cases where I'm not quite sure, then I really do like the nerve test. And sometimes uh, after the nerve test, if we're still not sure, then I really do like the steroid shot. Or sometimes we'll get an MRI of the neck uh, to take a look at that too. And, and, and despite all that, sometimes we have all that information and, and we think we have both. If we think we have both carpal tunnel syndrome and a pinched nerve in the neck, a lot of times we'll, I'll have them see a neck uh, physician or a neck surgeon and then usually what I would say is you know we have all the information we have we still don't know the specific breakdown is this 40 percent carpal tunnel and 60 percent neck or 80 percent carpal tunnel and 20 percent neck and a lot of times we uh, jump into some treatment whether it's a steroid shot or surgery and knowing that this may take care of part of the condition or part of the symptoms uh, however, we may need to do more exploring or further treatment if the symptoms don't uh, quite go away as much as we would have liked. The carpal tunnel syndrome tends to have some uh, nerve symptoms to it. So it tends to have some numbness or tingling or waking up at nighttime. Uh, a lot of times arthritis tends to be more pain and they tend to affect different locations. For example, carpal tunnel syndrome tends to affect the palm side of the wrist. Uh, things like wrist arthritis tend to affect the top side of the wrist. Uh, things like thumb arthritis tend to be at the base of the thumb. And so I think location of the pain and then also things that aggravate it. For example, carpal tunnel is uh, commonly aggravated by driving uh, or waking up with the hand feeling asleep. Things like thumb arthritis are commonly uh, worsened by uh, opening jars or gripping or opening doors. Um, certain sorts of wrist arthritis are worsened with twisting of the wrist or, or moving the wrist up and down. Um, and then x-rays do show arthritis. So if we're not quite sure, sometimes we'll get an x-ray in the office and, and arthritis should show up on the x-ray, whereas carpal tunnel syndrome uh, will not. Carpal tunnel syndrome 
uh, will show up on a nerve test, but it's, uh, it'll be invisible on the x-ray. Yes, yes, it can. And, and uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, you know, there are a number of symptoms that, that uh, are commonly uh, reported, um, but it can be quite variable in how uh, each person may describe that or how each person senses those symptoms. And so tingling in the fingers uh, certainly could be carpal tunnel.